Hello everyone, welcome to problem 1.1 1 .1 of uh, D uh, Townsend, John Townsend's Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So I'm going to be starting a new series on this textbook. Um, I know I have the ongoing series with David Griffith's Electrodynamics that I have started, but um, I just kind of burnt myself out on it, honestly, and just haven't really had the motivation to continue doing those problems. So. I'm just, just going to be doing some problems that I find um, interesting and right now I want to study some quantum mechanics so I'm starting to review, uh, this is the textbook I used in my undergraduate uh, class for um, advanced quantum mechanics, like I took two semesters of it so um, yeah I'm just going back through and reviewing some stuff and we're going to solve uh, problem 1.1 here. Um, so this has to do with the starting Gerlach experiment. It asks us to determine the field gradient of a 50 centimeter long stern Gerlach magnet that would produce a one millimeter separation at the detector between spin up and spin down silver atoms that are emitted by an oven at uh, a temperature of 1500 Kelvin. We assume the detector is located 50 centimeters from the magnet and the kinetic energy of the atoms emitted by the oven have an average kinetic energy of two times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. So I'm gonna put the textbook down real quick and just kind of go over this diagram here. So we have this oven that emits silver atoms. Um, and I've denoted the distance here between the oven and the magnets as 50 centimeters, although this distance really doesn't come into play. We have the stern and Gerlach device with the North Pole down here and South Pole up here. So the magnetic field is stronger at the North Pole and gradually decreases as it gets to the South Pole. And that, that descent, that rate of change of the magnetic field is what we're trying to find for this problem. And the length of the magnet here is also 50 centimeters, which I denote as L. And we have a couple distances here. So the separation between the two points that the atoms hit is D, which is one millimeter, which is very exaggerated here because this distance is much larger than this distance. So this is just for demonstration reasons. And we have some different things. So D um, is this total distance. Z is the total distance, vertical distance here between the origin, which I call the, or the zero point. This is my origin. And it's basically one half of, of D. So it's the distance between this origin and the top uh, point where the, at the silver atoms hit. And there's two distances, Z1 and Z2, which add up Z1 plus Z2 is Z, um, because when the silver atom traverses through the magnetic field, it experiences an acceleration, and that acceleration uh, makes it trend upward uh, for some atoms, some makes it go downward, but we're just assuming this we're talking about an atom that's going to go up here and that acceleration makes it experience a force uh, which or the force makes it experience an acceleration um, and that distance here uh, is z1 and then when it exits the magnetic field uh, there's no longer a force applied and so there's a difference a different distance traversed z2 after it uh, exits the magnetic field and that final distance, uh, vertical distance, Z, is Z1 plus Z2. So here you can see I have some of our parameters written down. So T is 1500 Kelvin. The vertical component of the force is approximately equal to the magnetic dipole moment times the, the gradient, the vertical uh, gradient of the magnetic field. So del B del Z. Um, the kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy is 2 kBt, where kB is the Boltzmann's constant. We have the magnetic dipole moment um, in the z direction is actually it's gq over 2mc, but g in this case is for, for an electron is 2, uh, the charge of an electron q is e, so that's e on top, and so the 2 cancels out and we have just mc here. Um, and where M here, I think, is the mass of the electron and C is the speed of light. And yeah, that's really about all the setup we need. So 
let's kind of just discuss how, how what happens to a single silver atom as it goes through this device. So as it's going through here, nothing happens, but as soon as it gets into the range of this magnetic field here, um, there's a magnetic field B going on here, it's going to experience acceleration um, in the vertical direction. There's a vertical acceleration, A sub Z, which is equal to the vertical component of the force divided by big M, which is the mass of the silver atom. So this is the acceleration that the silver atom experiences. So the distance Z1 is the vertical distance that the atom travels while in the magnetic field. And so just using simple kinematic equations, we have that Z1 is equal to one half the acceleration times T squared. Um, there's no, our, our initial distance here is zero. So we're defining our origin here along this line that the oven emits the silver atoms on. So there's no um, initial distance and there's no initial vertical velocity. So that's why we only have the one half a t squared term from the kinematic equation. And if we plug in t for t here, well, that's just the time um, between that, that that it takes the silver atom to go through the magnet, the magnet, um, which is just l, which is the distance of the magnet divided by the vertical component of the velocity squared. So divided by the vertical velocity, or sorry, the horizontal velocity, the x component velocity. So I should define the coordinates here. Um, so let me just kind of do this here. Uh, so x, x, y, z would make, so I guess you could do it like this. So this is x, y is going into the board. Yeah, x, y, z, so right hand rule. Um, so where am I at? We're down here. So we can replace the time squared with L over um, V sub X squared. And um, that gives us an expression for Z1. So that's the distance um, the silver atom travels in the initial part where it's going through the magnetic field. Once it gets out of the magnetic field, there's no more force exerted on it. And so it travels at a constant um, velocity. And so that distance Z2 between here, um, after it exits the magnetic field and when it hits a detector, that is just, so there's no acceleration. Um, and it's just equal to the, uh, the velocity V sub Z um, times T. And that's just equal, we just use the same expression for T. Um, so L over V sub X. Then if we solve or, uh, so the vertical velocity V sub uh, Z can be rewritten as the acceleration, the vertical acceleration times T. So Z2 can be written as A sub Z times L over V sub X squared. So I just wanted to stop real quick and clarify something. So I initially um, said that the distance between the, the oven and the magnet is 50 centimeters. However, I misread and the distance between the magnet and the detector is 50 centimeters. So, um, which is just gonna be the same as the length of a magnet essentially. So it's also L is the distance between the, this distance between the magnet and the detector. So after the, the atom exits the magnetic field, I was thinking here with Z2, when we replace the time it takes to go from the magnet to the uh, detector, um, well, there's no force exerted on it. So it has the same velocity as it had in the magnet. Um, because there's no other forces, so the velocity is just constant, and the distance is the same between that it travels in the magnet. So we we can replace t here with l over v sub x because that ver that horizontal uh, component of velocity is going to be the same as it was when it was in the magnet. So um, because the magnetic field doesn't give it any more uh, horizontal velocity.
um, only vertical velocity. So this is valid to replace this here. And so um, I'm going to replace this vertical velocity z with the uh, with this expression a sub z times t. And this lets us write z2 in terms of a sub z, since we wrote z1 in terms of a sub z. So z2 is a sub z times l over v sub x squared. Um, just plugging in uh, this here, we just get that squared. So the total vertical distance, z, that the silver atom travels till it hits a detector. Um, let me just fix that real quick. The, it, the total distance is z1 plus z2, so that's one half a sub z t squared plus a sub z t squared. So essentially that's three halves a sub z t squared or t written in terms of the velocity, the horizontal velocity and the distance else L over v sub x squared. So we get this expression for z. Now real quick, we want to find an expression for the horizontal velocity here, v sub x, because we don't know what that is. The problem doesn't tell us what that, what the initial velocity coming out of the oven is. But we do know the kinetic energy coming out of the oven, the average kinetic energy. So the average kinetic energy is written as one half mvx squared, which is we know is equal to two times the Boltzmann constant times t. So just solving for v sub x squared, we get v sub x squared is equal to four times the Boltzmann constant times t divided by the mass of the silver atom. So now that we have this expression we can go ahead and um, use what we know d. So d is the distance of separation between the two points on the detector that the atoms are hitting. And that distance d is just two times our distance z um, because z is half that distance. So d is two times z. And then plugging in what we got for z, we get, um, for d we get three um, times a sub z times L over Vx squared, and then plugging in um, for V sub X squared, we get three A sub Z L squared times, um, just flipping this term because it's on the bottom, M divided by four K sub Vt. And then replacing the acceleration A sub Z with the force divided by the mass, which is what acceleration is, we get that expression just plugging every, everything is the same so we just have s of z over m then those m's cancel out so the mass cancels and we just get this expression um, here where the, it's the same as here just the, with the mass is canceled and then finally just rearranging some terms real quick uh, d is equal to three fourths times the magnetic moment mu times l squared divided by the Boltzmann constant times the temperature T times the gradient um, uh, where we replaced, oh yeah, here we replaced the force F with the magnetic dipole moment mu times the gradient, which is comes from over here, um, which is something that uh, is in chapter one of the book. So, Plugging that in and solving, then all we have to do is solve for this term here, which is what we're trying to find. That is the, the gradient, the magnetic gradient. Um, we get four thirds times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature divided by the magnetic moment mu times L squared. So really, uh, you can. I, I just left it here in algebraic form, but you could plug everything in, all the numbers in. Um, this is an expression that we know all the numbers. I don't know what the actual answer is off the top of my head. Um, I think if I looked it up, um, I, I remember something like 1200 um, G per centimeters or something. I, I've got to look that up, but um, just an algebraic form we have this and you can plug in mu sub Z with uh, this expression. So E over MC um, to get the, to find out what the actual number here is, but that's what the gradient is in algebraic form. All right, so that concludes this problem. If you guys have any questions or um, clarifications that need to be made, 
feel free to let me know. Um, and if you have any uh, spot any mistakes that I made, please let me know and point them out in the comments below so that I can pin your comment and make sure that anyone else that watches a video sees that correction um, because I am human. So, um, you know, I'm just trying to solve this with what I know. Um, I don't really have much to go off of. I don't really have any solutions to really uh, compare this to. So um, if you guys have any corrections, please let me know. But this is what I came up with. Um, so thank you guys for watching um, and hope you guys have a, have a great rest of your day. See you guys on problem 1.2.